arrived at Corcovado by boat, and speeding towards the shore felt like getting lost at the end of the world. This was a visit that began with a guided hike through the park, and I couldn't wait to get into the jungle. We gathered near the entrance and headed out. The distinctive sounds of tropical birds greeted us as we headed further into the park. The deeper you hike into a rainforest, the more you realize how little sunlight makes it through to the forest floor. It's so dark, even in the middle of the daytime when you're walking through the jungle, but every once in a while there's a break in the canopy and it's like, let there be light. The vibrant green is just amazing. When a big canopy tree like this falls down, which a couple of them have, there's one up there as well, it creates an opening for the sunlight to come through, which creates competition here in the rainforest. And so you'll find that where these trees have fallen is some of the most verdant, and you can see that everything is coming back in force where these trees have fallen. When a tree ends up on the forest floor, that's an opportunity to observe some of the most active residents of the rainforest. Ants. Living in huge mounds of red clay and performing their function of keeping the forest floor neatly trimmed and tidy, a close-up look shows just how much strength he uses to move vegetation across the jungle floor. This tiny seed he's carrying would be like a human lugging a pine tree on their back for a couple of miles. I fell back from the group to get a sense of my surroundings. It's very quiet when you're walking through the jungle after it rains. Just quiet, peaceful, and very wet. Our guide revealed to us the intricacies of the ecosystem, confirming my belief that the best classroom is nature itself. Eventually, the silence of the jungle faded. Well, I can hear the sounds of the ocean in front of me. Boy, if I were lost in here and trying to find my way out, that would be a very good sound indeed. I made my way down the steep, wet trail to the shoreline. The sound of the ocean meant we'd reach the San Pedrillo Ranger Station, the halfway point of the hike where we'd grab some water and a little rest at what for a ranger must be the posting of a lifetime. This was where we spotted a tamandua, a species of anteater. Its distinctive black and off-white fur made it look to me like a small panda. At around four feet long, this guy is about as big as a tamandua gets. Well, what a beautiful hike. It's uh, pretty steamy and muggy in that jungle. This is just a rest stop, so I'm gonna rest. Before long, we were back on the trail, heading in for a leg of the hike that would bring us along the Rio Serena. Here near the ocean, the brackish waters of the river attract hunters like this tiger heron looking for an easy meal. There he goes. Got him. But if he doesn't pay close attention, he could end up a meal himself. The stillness and quiet of this section of the river created a spooky, swamp-like feel like we'd stepped through a time portal into the Jurassic period. As we headed further along the banks, the river brought new scenery and a different vibe to the experience, and the atmosphere began to percolate with life. Like when we spotted this Jesus lizard, so named for its ability to walk on water. This second part of the hike to the waterfalls next to the river is like a totally different experience. It's much more lush it just seems like there's more life. I also hear monkeys in the trees and, and macaws, so it's definitely a whole new experience. I guess with the water comes the life. The sound of running water is a natural energizer, and even though the hike had been a lot of work in the humid jungle, the second half seemed to give energy rather than take it. Things really got exciting when we spotted this three-toed sloth in the trees up above the trail. With all the moss in his fur creating the perfect camouflage, we may have walked right under this guy without seeing him. Wow. 
The ultimate destination for this hike were the San Padrillo waterfalls, where we'd get the chance to cool off in the river. And before I knew it, there they were. These falls help to move water through Corcovado, recognized as one of the most biodiverse places on the planet. And at nearly 80 feet, they're a sight to behold. As you come around the final turn on the trail, it's a very nice reveal to see the San Padrillo waterfalls. It's a little too strong to go swimming, but there are some swimming holes back that we passed on the way, so I'm gonna go cool off. These smaller pools and falls are a true paradise and provided the opportunity for a much needed cool down. As we swam in the cool waters of the Rio Serena, I realized the planet doesn't get any better than this.